Right, so we've just done a horizontal cut, we've opened the log. Um, doesn't really matter how you get into that, but as long as you've revealed the face like this, we've already uh, adjusted it somewhat, but as you can see, we're getting considerable back scores. Now, uh, you swing that blade horizontal. If we brought that over the slab, be able to notice what the blade looks like in the cut. So if you come around here, you can see the tooth is touching at the rear and if you roll that around it's not touching at the front. So it means these lines mean something. So that's called horizontal crisscross. We call that adjustment one. We want that blade to be absolutely parallel with the beam so that the front tooth is scoring and the back tooth is scoring. So on the chainsaw machine, it's quite simple. That adjustment. So once again, if you look at that, that little gap there, got about two mils of gap. All we want to do is bring that axis point down so that that tooth is equal to the slab as the, the front side. So we're just gonna take a spanner and push that down. Go. Okay, so there's your gap, about two mil. So we will loosen this bolt. Oops. And then tighten that bolt. You can put your finger there and you can actually feel when the thing moves down. I can feel that it's actually moving down. And you can see the tooth is lowering. So let's have a look at the back side. Here you go around. So we'll bring that tooth around there. So we're about half a mil clearance. We'll roll around, and we're about half a mil clearance. So I know that that's going to cut true, and as a consequence, you're going to get front and back score marks. So you, it's called the crisscross effect, adjustment one. So once that's done, we can move then on to the horizontal lead-in. Now the horizontal lead-in is the tilt of the blade when it swings into horizontal. So the first thing I do when I go out in sight and have a look at someone's machine as I swing the blade into horizontal position I bring the machine back as close as I can to the skid I step back, I kneel and I compare that horizontal blade to that skid and you should be able to notice a slight dip, a dip. so that's the cutting side needs to be slightly lower so you're aligning this blade to that skid and this little edge here needs to dip just fractionally and it should be noticeable. What that means is this is where all the horsepower is going. Now if you had it back the other way, if you had the lead reverse like that, it means every time you move to the next cut it's going to resolve. So it feels as though something's sagging, something's bending, but all it is, is it's trying to resaw as you move across, doing your sizing. So you need that lead, right? So to adjust So that, winding that out will give you more lead. Winding it in will give you less lead. You've got to have lead on any swing blade saw mill. If you don't have that lead, the blade will consistently re-skim the log as you move to each additional board. So you need to be moving away from the cut. Right, so that's horizontal lead in. We've already adjusted that, and you can actually test that simply by doing a small cut followed by a deep cut. A deep cut may be six inch, right? So if you've got a small half a millimeter line transition between a, 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 your two deep cuts, it means that you've got it set right. 
when you're doing smaller boards, that line won't be so noticeable. It'll only be noticeable when you're doing deep horizontal cuts. All right, so we, we know we've got that right. So now we'll move on to our third adjustment, which is vertical crisscross. And we can do the exact same thing. We'll, we'll drop it down, say a three inch, we'll cut a board, and then we'll drop it down a, uh, an additional three inch to make you six inch. Really the tall tail sign of getting your, your, your blade adjusted is that when it comes through the, the log and it's deepest cut, it exits clean, it doesn't go zing, it doesn't make weird noises, it exits clean, and you should be able to drive it right back into the cut without spraying sawdust. And the same applies to horizontal. The horizontal full depth cut should go straight through, exit clean, you should be able to come straight back into the cut without spraying sawdust everywhere. That's when you know you've got your adjustment right. With crisscross, it can be irregular. So don't rely on crisscross. The, 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 the real scenario is if that blade can cleanly cut a, a deep vertical cut or a horizontal cut and enter back through it without spray. So what we'll do is we'll drop this down and we'll go straight to a six inch. We're being brave. Normally you want to do them in smaller test increments, you know, you don't want to burn your blade. And, and usually when you, when you first uh, set your machine up, after you do your deep cut, you should really shut things down, put your hand on the blade. If your blade's cool, you're right. Then you can, you know, do your fine adjustments. If your blade's hot, stop, figure out what's going on and adjust it. Right, so cool. struggled a little bit. Poplar is a little bit uh, difficult to cut around the outside. You get this sort of furry uh, cross-grained effect. Um, so when you do come into a situation that feels like it's uh, a bit of resistance, I find driving forward and back a little bit will, um, will clear up the cut. You know, it'll get all that stringy stuff out. Um, but looking at this, it kind of looks like the vertical's pretty close. We'll just uh, confirm that. We'll bring that, that blade back into the cut and see what's going on. Alright, so there's our blade and we'll have a look here. We can see that uh, we can see that it's just touching there. Take the tip around to the other side and there we go. It's got a good millimeter clearance at that side. So it means the blade is at an angle like this. Now it's close, it didn't sort of zing out of the cut. But um, I tell you what, if you, just, if you just go and have a look and see what your blades, your tooth's doing against that face, um, that's, a, that's a good indicator. So you're touching there and you're not touching at the other side. So see this little horizontal axis point here? All we want to do is bring that that way, which will take that tooth away to cut it equal up front and back. So again, we'll get that, uh, 
16 and 17. Right, so I'm going to loosen this off. And, you know, this is, this is a fine adjustment. So, again, you can put your fingers there, figure out if it's moving or not. And I think that's going to be pretty good. So if we take that blade back to the slab, I can see we've got a bit of a gap there now, which is a good sign. Roll that down to the other side. Yeah, so I'd say that's pretty, pretty close. So very simple to figure out. Um, now we'll do a, a, a six inch horizontal cut followed by a six inch vertical cut.